Okay, so if you enjoy creating composites and photo art in Photoshop, but you want to make it more epic, add more atmosphere, better lighting, more effects, then you're gonna to wanna to stick around because in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you just how to do that. Hey guys, you're watching Dowski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can level up your creative work in Photoshop. So whether it's composites, photo art, concept art, photo manipulation, it doesn't really matter. There are a bunch of different adjustment layers and effects that you can use to take your work to the next level. So without further ado, let's jump to the screen and get started. Right, so we're now in Photoshop and you can see on screen, I have a piece of Resident Evil 3 inspired artwork. This is something that I created recently in anticipation for the RE3 remake coming out this year. Very, very excited. And all of my pieces of artwork that are like this, they're very game inspired, very dramatic, and they always follow a similar folder structure. And there's one folder in particular at the top that I call post effects that is in purple, that when I turn it off, makes the work look like this, turn it back on, it looks like this. And there's a few key adjustment layers in here that I wanna go through in this video because they can honestly help you take your designs, your own composites, your photo art, remember from this to this. So I think it's very, very important to go through them and to learn them. Everything else in this document is pretty straightforward. We have the scene, so the location and anything in the scene. In this case, fire, zombies, and a few other bits and pieces. We have the subject, in this case, Jill Valentine, the heroine of RE3. And then this most important layer, post FX, where all of this stuff resides. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna focus on this folder here. I'm gonna turn everything off. So it looks like this. And we're gonna go through them one by one. So if I just turn on the fog folder, you can see that does have quite a nice difference to the atmosphere. This is just some fog. I can turn this all the way up to 100%. It looks like this. So what I've done is just drop the opacity, change the blending mode to lighten or screen. Any areas that are black will blend into the background. The white or the fog is then retained. So that's really, really good at creating atmosphere. So you can get fog images or you can get fog brushes. I'll try and link some fog cloud and particle brushes in the video description. We've got clouds again, very similar to fog, same technique, just kind of building on that atmosphere. We've got some particles as well. Again, this is uh, set to a particular blending mode, color dodge, 50% opacity. I can double click this to go inside and you can see that's how it looks originally. So I'm really just building up the atmosphere, building up the fog, any particles in the air. If there's fire in the foreground, you could maybe have some cinders. Now next we've got the color lookup adjustment layer. This is probably the most important layer in the whole document. If I turn this on, you can see it takes a lot of the, the punchiness out of the color and really gets it pretty close to how the final design looks. And if I click on the layer thumbnail here, you can see this is futuristic bleak. Now when I'm doing my bits of artwork, futuristic bleak is definitely the one that I use the most. Now, maybe that's just part of my particular style, but it just gives it like a really nice kind of washed out look, but still retains some of the color. Horror blue is pretty cool as well. In fact, all of these are fun. So definitely play around with all of them. But I think the next one up, actually, if I turn this on, because I've stacked a few of them, is actually horror blue. And that's at 20% opacity. So all the way up, it looks like this. And then we've got a few more. So we've got another color lookup. This is fall colors. So there's no blending mode here, but you can see how it affects it. It kind of uh, makes the blacks a little bit lighter. Next up is color balance. So it introduces a little bit more kind of pinky purpleness and you can double click on that thumbnail for this adjustment layer and you can adjust the colors in the shadows, midtones, and the highlights. Very, very useful adjustment layer for blending one image with another image, even if the colors are completely different. Next up, we've got hue and saturation. 
So I think I just use this to literally desaturate the arm here. You can see the color on this is much more vibrant than on her face. So I just desaturated that arm to make it match a little closer. We've got another color lookup, which I think from memory is futuristic bleak again, layered up twice, but at 30% opacity. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm actually just layering up all of these different adjustment layers. And when you add them all up together, it really does have quite a significant effect. Now, the way I work isn't just I'll create the scene, the character, do all the work, and then just dump a load of adjustment layers on. It's very much a uh, gradual process. So I'll start building the character, introduce a few particles, go back to the character, adjust the lighting, that kind of thing. So it doesn't all happen at once, but this is how I work. And I always find that when I get to the end, I just turn off that post effects folder and just look at the monstrosity that it is without all of these effects. It's quite fun actually, just sitting there, turning it off and back on again. Okay, so next up we have some solid color fills, just blue and red. You can see these appear here. I think there was a police car originally in the design. So this is meant to symbolize the, uh, the siren of the police car, but I think it's now obscured and covered with fire and things. Lamps. So you can see here we have the Raccoon City Police Department. If that made sense, don't worry. <laughs> If you're a fan of RE3, then you know exactly what that is, and RE2 as well. So I can turn this off and back on. In fact, there is a specific tutorial I've done on how to create lights and illumination like this. So if you'd like to follow that one, I'll link it on screen now. Next, we've got a levels adjustment layer and a curves adjustment layer, both very similar. Essentially, this first levels one is just darkening the outside areas around the subject. And then the curves is just lightening up the subject specifically. And then we've got a couple of brightness and contrast ones, just again, bringing that color up, bringing that color up again. This probably could have been one adjustment layer rather than two, but because this is just a, a piece of artwork that I'm working on, I'm not gonna be sharing this file with anyone. My layers can be as crazy and chaotic as I want them to be. I could go and condense them, but well, that takes time and effort. So no, this is just fine for me. And lastly, we've just got a little bit of blue. This is very subtle, but it just adds a little bit more blue down her left side or her right side, depending on your perspective, coming off of the police car in the background here. And then just a little bit of like yellowy orange on the right side. So some glow from the fire that is over this side. And the last one that I've added, and I add this to all my artwork pieces, because when I'm combining different images or maybe 3D objects, vectors, all that good stuff into a piece of work, you might have photographs that have noise in them. You might have 3D objects or vectors that are just perfectly clean and crisp. I like to blend them together with some noise. So if I turn this on, you can see it adds a grain over the top. So areas that were previously clean Everything just gets this noise, kind of like as if it is a photograph. If you want to create that, it's very simple. Just create a new layer, use black, grab the fill tool, the fill tool, the paint bucket tool. Click, filter, noise, add noise, select a big amount, 100, Gaussian, monochromatic, click OK, change the blending mode to overlay or soft light drop the opacity down nice and low, somewhere between five, 15%. And there you go. That's essentially how I create that noise layer. And there we go. That's a run through of all of the different adjustment layers that I used to turn this piece of artwork from this into this. And if you are interested to learn more about the different adjustment layers, I will also link another tutorial on screen now that goes through all 19 of them in detail. It's a long tutorial, but it's definitely worth it if you'd like to level up your composites or your photo art in Photoshop. Okay, so there's a look at my process and hopefully a few tricks that you can take away and use in your own work. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do have any questions or comments, hey, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.